Lord. We turn now in the blue booklets to page two. Kevin's just coming out, so he's ready to light the Advent candle. We've got Kevin playing the organ today, and we don't often see him because he's hidden away. So, Kevin, if you just wait here with me for a moment, that'd be lovely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Now it is time to awake out of sleep. For the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. For the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and put on the armour of light. For the day is at hand. So Kevin and I will move to the candle, and Janice will lead the prayer in a moment. Yes, when you've got that. When we've got there. Okay, we're going this way. God of Abraham and Sarah, and all the patriarchs of old, you are our father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit to make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Father, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have and what said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the first reading. A reading from Isaiah.
The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people should come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's too many Advent hymns on this page. Our, ad, our next hymn is number 263. Hark, a herald voice is calling. Christ is nigh, it seems to say. Hymn number 263. Please be seated. The Lord be with you, and also, oh, thank you. Jesus, hang on. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as in the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and well, one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not let, have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's the first Sunday of Advent. Where did that year go? Only four weeks until Christmas. And, because Christmas Day is on a Sunday, it will be a full four weeks, the longest possible period for Advent. And yet there is so much more to do. The cards have to be bought, signed, addressed and delivered. The presents have to be decided, bought, wrapped, delivered. The decorations have to be found, untangled and put up. The food and drink have to be organized and prepared, and the timetable for all that has to be worked out and followed. Oh, how will we manage to do it all, in addition to all the ordinary tasks of living? Help! 
There's also church services to, to organise and attend. Carol services, crib services, Christingwell services and Christmas services. So much to arrange, so much to do. There is little time to sit quietly, study, pray and be open to God's presence. Time is so limited. We will never be able to cope with anything unexpected. But that is what Jesus warned his disciples about with his mention of the times of Noah. They were eating and drinking and having parties. I misquote slightly. For once, in this illusion, Jesus is not stressing the faith and obedience of Noah. He is pointing out the fact that all the other people were getting on with their ordinary lives. Some of them would have been bad people, but most of them were probably fairly good people. But they were so completely taken up with their own lives that they had no time to consider the why and the how. Only Noah was open to the message from God. All the others were so preoccupied that they were not aware of the flood warning. Oh, and now there's the Football World Cup taking our attention too. I feel sorry for the poor goalkeeper. Some of the time, the play is all down at the opposing end of the pitch. The goalkeeper has to remain alert, although he has little or nothing to do. Then suddenly, the ball and most of the players are in his half and he has to be aware of threats from all directions. Worst of all must be when he has to defend from penalties, when he has the individual responsibility of taking the action that will save or concede a goal. Similarly, our lives can, much of the time, be apparently uneventful. We have our own part of the world to look after. All the troubles, physical and spiritual, are far away, and there's nothing we can do about them. It would be easier to ignore them. But we should be prepared. Then suddenly, we are beset by problems. We are beset by temptations. We have to act. We have to decide what we can do, what we should do. We might overreact, or we might do nothing. We might assert our selfish power and act wrongly. We might abdicate responsibility and allow some evil to happen. We should have been prepared. Or we may find that we, suddenly, have to give our individual witness to the truth of our faith. There we are, apparently alone, with that great responsibility and with the world watching. We should have been prepared. We have to be prepared for Christ's second coming. But surely Christ with God and through the Holy Spirit is always present. The little parable shows that the world is not destroyed. There is still a field where the man is working. There is still a mill where the woman is grinding meal. And in Isaiah's vision, people come to the mountain of the Lord. They come asking for God's arbitration and judgment. They come acknowledging God's authority. They come knowing that there is peace in the world. Life goes on, but under God's authority. Christ is always present, but needs to be received by each person. If we are truly waiting, he is present. If we are truly prepared, he has arrived. But are we waiting? Are we prepared? We must not be so taken up with everyday living that we put off or ignore the preparations that we have to make for the coming of God's kingdom, God's authority, and Christ's return. That is when our actions, our preparedness, will be judged and probably found wanting. Then 
we can only trust in God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Amen. Please stand if you're able. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In hope and joy, let us pray to the Father, and Debbie will lead our prayers today. Dear Lord, as we head towards Christmas and the close of another year, we give thanks for all that we have shared and enjoyed together as a church family. We give thanks for the guidance and support given by Canon Janet, Reverend Teresa, Father John and Janice, and for the work that goes on unseen by Sandra and Roy, the wardens, and the many volunteers that work throughout the week and on a Sunday. We pray that our church will continue to grow and that people will continue to join the community and feel safe, cared for and supported. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Our world has been troubled since early days and life has often become difficult as it is now. You, Lord, have given us a vision of a day when the earth will be at peace and all of our troubles will end. We pray that your spirit will move within the hearts of those that govern our countries so that divisions in the world can be ended and all nations can be at peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy. At this time of year, as we are beginning to think about the buying and receiving of gifts and prepare for the celebration of your birth, help us not to dwell too much on the material things in life. Help us to remember, especially this Christmas, even more than in previous years, that many people in our community do not have the means to support themselves and their families. Many cannot afford to heat their homes, afford to feed their children, or look after themselves and their loved ones properly. Help us as a church and individually to offer help and support whenever or however we can whether this is through food bank donations, giving money to charity, or just opening our hearts and the church door to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. We think of those within our church family who are missing this morning because of illness, whether it is in body, mind or soul. Although they are not sat beside us, we pray that they will gain strength from knowing that everyone here is thinking of them and praying for their healing and recovery. We give thanks for those that have been ill but are now well again and able to worship with us again. Lord, in your mercy. In the stillness of this morning, we pray for everyone we know who is mourning the loss of a loved one. 
Whether it is a recent loss or from years gone by, the pain and hurt still feels the same. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us through each step of our lives, when we have enjoyed happy times with a parent's love, time with family and friends. In the depths of our grief, help us to remember those times and also know that you have been beside us each step of life's journey. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, as we go out into our lives this week, we pray that you will open our eyes so that we may see your presence in our lives and the world. Forgive us for not always being prepared and ready for you. Help us to live our lives as though we believe that Christ is returning each and every day. Guard us, guide us, protect us, so that when we are joined with you, we will be in communion with you to sing your praise and glory forever. Awaiting his coming in glory, and as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, to heaven, may be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, power and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Please will you stand if you feel able for the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. And we do so including those on Zoom. And we've got with us today Chris Giles, David's iPhone, Hilda Parry, Jean, Pauline and Roger, Rita and Rowena and Yebu. And Barbara Flight would be with us, but the physios turned up. <laughs> so bless them. Now, I don't think, has anybody been asked to admit, help administer communion today to hold a chalice? No. Okay. Um, are the two of the people who are licensed to do this, willing to do it this morning? Give me a wave, please. Oh, um, yep. I can see Linda and... Um, Merle, so thank you. If you want comes either side, that would be great when we get to the Sung Agnes Day. But now we're going to sing hymn number 70, 70, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart, hymn number 70. God, our sustainer, receive the gifts we bring before you. And feed us continually with that bread which satisfies all hunger. Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for that day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, 
and forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and of your Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, Lord by Lord. your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of Lawrence and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because you'll share in one bread. <coughs> you will take away the sins of the world. Partners. Take us, so have mercy on us. Lord, you take away the sins. Grant us mercy on us. Grant 
drawn near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink and in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray on page 15 of the Blue Booklet. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Send us out. But before you go, we're going to have refreshments in church this morning and then give you the chance to have a look at the Nativity Festival if you would like to. Now, please could you just be patient and allow us to set up a little bit more of it and not start wandering around because there is a very clever system to enable you to vote for the most original the one you'd like to take home with you, but you can't. <laughs> and the one which makes you think more, more about Jesus. And there is a catalogue. And I'm looking at Linda here because she was she's now fully trained to be at the front door, as is Sandra and Janice. But we need to get them in place so you can get your raffle tickets to vote, get your catalogue, and then wend your way round. But if you're a bit too impatient, you can go and play in the play area beforehand. Can I ask that you don't go round with a cup of hot coffee in your hand, please, or even in a cup? If you sort of sit down and have your coffee first yeah. or do the rounds and then. And Graham is coming. He's going to come for 11 o'clock, which is when we formally open. But yesterday he was here in good time so that you can see the tiny, tiny one through his microscopes. And the one at the back corner there, that's another one you could maybe just sit at and reflect at, is the star on. Cheers, the starlight's on. Because Roy and Peter had a male bonding exercise taking a white van over to Stratford to get it on Tuesday. And the lady whose father made it came back with hers. And she's so thrilled that we've got it here. And it is ours to keep. It is quite a valuable piece of artwork, as well as very beautiful. And other churches were after it. And I said, how come we are the lucky ones? You won't believe this. She said, Janet, you seemed the most sensible. <laughs> so there we go. So there we go. So, and as this is proving so popular, we are going to open next Saturday morning from 10 till 1, and Graham can be with us. And I'm even thinking about doing an evening this week, but I need to look at the football schedule and um, have a word with Graham too. So there we go. That's today. And we'll change the pay as machine so that any donations are electronically will go to, it's going to raise our roof, help mend our ceiling, and also um, our diocesan link with Malawi, which I think is the fourth poorest country in the world. And there are so many appeals on at the moment. And a lot of the high profile ones are rightly, you know, grabbing the attention. But it's important that People like ourselves with special links don't forget those people as well. And we're doing this on the back of our wonderful Christmas fair last week. At the moment, the total is £2,343.47, but we are expecting that to rise. And there's also an additional 300 for the Mother's Union. Something like that. Some of the jewellery money which Linda put together is... Um, for the work of the Mother's Union. Again, a valuable cause. And they were talking about domestic violence just before I was on BBC WM at 8.15 this morning. Janice heard me. If you mm -hmm. didn't hear me, will we be able to put it on our YouTube channel? Yes, we recorded it. <laughs> so there we go. Community Christmas. 
Now, we're not doing that on Christmas Day this year. We're doing it on Saturday the, Saturday, the 10th of December. And we're really, really short of people who can drive, who can go and pick up some of the um, people in the community and bring them to the Methodist Church. So if you can help with that, have a word with me or get in touch with Jenny Shardlow directly because she is losing sleep over this at the moment. We've got our carol service on the 18th of December, now at 6.30, so you can watch the World Cup men's football final, including penalties and injury time and all the rest of it. And we're still continuing our Bible study on Wednesday, which we love, don't we? Most of the time. Most of the time. Not when we're preaching on the readings. Well, well. Um, but it's now at the later time of 5.15 till 6 o'clock, and we do it on Zoom. Next Saturday, we've also got the carol service at Maysfield Community Garden at 11.30. We know they've been advertising at 11, but we're going for 11.30. And we've got Chris Stingle a fortnight today, and there were children's society envelopes around. So, you know, if you have any spare money, stuff it in there. And if you've got a children's society box, please could you bring it back either at that service or at another before the end of the year. And I'm also hoping to organise a beer and carols. I just need to talk to the pub, look at the football schedule and see what we can do. Because someone yesterday coming round said, oh, are you doing beer and carols at the pub again? And I thought, better do that. What am I doing in the pub? They were here. I wasn't <laughs> in the pub. Let's be clear. Why not? Exactly. Well, the problem is, we're going to the pub. The church wardens are always there. Touche. Touche. Bless you. Said with love. Anything I've forgotten? No. The blessing and then a hymn. Let me get this in the right order for once. Please will you stand if you feel able. Thrice the sun of righteousness shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is number 650.